Hey, this is Tom Webster, and this is Sounds Profitable for Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023, a key to global podcast growth. A recent research report from Japan highlights how podcasting can grow when it germinates from a very different seed. I'm going to break down that data and how it applies to podcasting everywhere. But first, available now from Sounds Profitable and Signal Hill Insights, The Medium Moves the Message, a comparative study of the effects of advertising across AM, FM radio, television, and podcasting. You can download the free deck from soundsprofitable.com slash research. Download all you want. We'll make more. Recently, Otono and Asai Shimbun released their annual podcast report in Japan, a, a massive 10,000-person study of Japanese consumers and their relationship with our favorite medium, podcasting. Podcast listening there continues to lag behind what we've seen in some Western countries. About 16% of the population 15 years and older listen at least monthly. Uh, that 16% compared in, to the U.S., uh, according to the most recent Infinite Dial, uh, it's 42% with Americans 12 plus. So the, the American number is almost triple. Now, I've worked a little bit in Japan, certainly not enough that I would feel comfortable speculating on why podcasting is or is not catching on there, depending on how you read the fullness or emptiness of the glass. I spent a couple of weeks there years ago consulting a radio station that played everything from smooth jazz to opera in an average day. Uh, and my brief time there was as much like visiting another planet as anything I've ever done. So much so that you're not going to hear any hot takes from me about the future of podcasting in Japan. I, I don't know. What this report does give us, though, is a glimpse into what listening looks like in a country where podcasting's introduction to the masses was very different from how the medium grew here in the U.S., for many of podcasting's first 20 years, it was not only a niche medium, but it was a niche tied to a very distinct segment of the population, iPod and then later iPhone users. And we're not talking about iPhone users circa 2022, but iPhone users in the early days, weirdos like me who were attending a conference in Minneapolis and ducked out in the afternoon to wait in line at a random AT&T store to get the first one. I pulled that out recently, by the way. What? A brick. In short, podcasting's gestation in this country was largely tied to a segment of the population that did not profile in the middle of the bell curve. iPhone users in particular continue to have substantially different profiles in demographics and behaviors to Android users, and this was even more true 10 years ago. I remember first asking questions like, why do you listen to podcasts back in the late 2000s? and commonly getting answers like to listen to content I can't get anywhere else. Podcasting in America grew from a seed of people interested in podcasting, the thing itself, and not necessarily for a specific show. I can't tell you how many podcasts I had on my 100 megabyte hard drives and 5 megabyte iPods back then, certainly more than I could possibly listen to. Podcasting was introduced to a particular segment of American society in the mid-2000s, and it stayed there for quite some time. Even podcasting's breakout hit, Serial, was just catnip for that existing audience and not necessarily an entree for the wider population. The very name podcasting itself held the medium back in immeasurable ways. And yeah, you cranky OGs listening to this, I know, I know, it's the name we have, but still. What we know of podcasting today is a result of how it grew here, not as a mainstream phenomenon, but as a decidedly left-of-center one. The Japanese podcast listener, on the other hand, profiles extremely differently. If you want to know what podcasting might have looked like in the United States if it were parachuted into mainstream awareness all at once instead of drip-fed by way of Cupertino, Japan is your lab. That's not to say that podcasting didn't also start in Japan through the conduit of Apple, but it certainly didn't get very big in Japan that way. Today, according to the Otonal Asai Shimbun report, nearly half of podcast listeners just started listening in the past year. That's nearly half of that 16%. And less than 20% have been listening for more than four years. And unlike the early days of podcasting in the U.S., where listening was concentrated 30 to 44, podcast listening in Japan is young. 28% of monthly listeners are 15 to 29, and 
are under 40. Listening in the U.S. didn't start getting appreciably younger until Spotify made its mark in the medium, and a whole cohort of 13 to 29s were exposed to podcasts in ways that they had never been before. In Japan, Spotify is even more important to podcasting, with 42% of 15 plus using the service to listen to podcasts compared to 22% who use Apple. Just as in the U.S., there's a tremendous opportunity for podcasting with the older audience, but the path there may be even less clear given Spotify's demographics. So what does podcasting look like in a country where, to a large degree, it was introduced to the mainstream public and not to a narrow segment? Well, simple. It's defined by how people use podcasts and not by fans of podcasting itself. Exhibit A. The top genre for podcasts in Japan is news, while what they call incident slash crime is way down there at number 17. And here in America, of course, we love our incident slash crime. Learning English is the number six genre, and business is number four. All of these differences from the U.S. rankings speak to a much more utilitarian use for podcasts, not I need a new podcast to listen to, but I need to learn English or I need to catch the headlines, etc., it's a means to an end and not the end itself. There's no better evidence of this than the number one reason the sample lists for getting into podcasts. I can now listen on music apps such as Spotify and Amazon Music. Like they say in the NBA, there's no better ability than availability. The top reasons for listening to podcasts include entertainment, relaxation, but also, intriguingly, to enjoy content with ears only, which some podcast network should adopt as their tagline, immediately. But I was particularly interested in the reasons why people started listening to podcasts that grew year over year from last year's report, among the gainers, because the media was introducing its own podcast show. The content of other voice services had become a podcast. I read newspaper or magazine articles about it, and I saw the information on television. That's right. Some of podcasting's biggest gains in Japan are from hearing about podcasts on other media. We're so focused on word of mouth and recommendations here, which are, of course, important, but not focused enough on using other media to talk about podcasts. And I'm not talking here about the easy button of social media. Uh, and by the way, I'm recording this from Boston. And as you can tell in the background, I or somebody else is getting arrested. But you know what? We're going to keep podcasting because that's just day to day life. I think it's instructive to look at how podcasting has grown organically in Japan and consider how we could use those lessons here in the U.S. or wherever you're listening to this in English. For some, their introduction to podcasting is going to be the show, whether that's Rogan or the new Spotify champ Brain Leak. But for millions more, it could be a very utilitarian introduction, simply a more convenient way to get the content they already like or as a companion to some other content. Podcasting for what it does and not for something more intrinsic. And this, I think, is the biggest disconnect between podcasting's ambassadors in this country and the next wave of people that we need to reach. Podcasting in America was born of dissatisfaction. It was a rebellion against what was commercially available, led by the underserved. As it has spread to countries like Japan, it's being introduced to a population that's currently satisfied by their content offerings. And this requires a different strategy, one that emphasizes the utility and convenience of podcasting, and not exclusively, at least, its uniqueness. And that kind of thinking might be the key to unlock new audiences here in the U.S. The mainstream 55-plus audience, for example, has yet to really adopt podcasting, primarily because they're relatively happy with what they're getting from radio and other audio outlets. So while I'd love to sell my dad on Lore or The Moth, the better bet might be to position podcasting as the way to listen to what you already know and like, except when you want to listen to it. And The White Vault can come later. It's not the most glamorous way to market podcasting. But you know what? Podcasting hasn't tried to market itself in this way at any scale. And maybe it's time to change that. Download the report. I encourage you to read it. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes. And thanks again for listening to my article, A Key to Global Podcast Growth. This episode was built using Spooler and hosted on Art19. I'm Tom Webster. We'll see you next time.